This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This is all about latitude part two of this video. And it's part of the Earth as a system unit. And it's going to follow along from part one. Part one was just briefly looking at what is latitude. What are these parallel lines that go north and south of the equator uh, from North Pole to South Pole? And we looked at the important ones like the Tropic of Cancer right here. Uh, Capricorn, which then divides or separates the tropics from the mid-latitudes, uh, and then looking at um, the Arctic Circle, the Antarctic Circle, looking at the polar regions, obviously focusing on the um, the latitude of the equator and breaking into two hemispheres. And this video is going to, in terms of what we can do in the classroom with it, so why do we teach latitude as a introductory class or lesson in earth science or physical geography or geology so how we why what's the point because students always ask why are we doing something and latitude is a fantastic foundational topic which can build upon different uh, related topics that we look at in the curriculum later on so it's a great thing to look at and we're going to discuss that today so we have our lines of latitude now here this black line right here on this little map this little globe is our equator and it's zero degrees, and it separates the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere. And we have 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south in our polar regions. Now, if I just draw a quick little basic Earth, and I put in the tilt, right? So the Earth's tilt, which was established when the Earth was first forming 4.56 billion years ago, and uh, based on inertia and movement of the, around the sun and revolution and the mass uh, and collisions with other uh, outside forces and materials as it's forming, the tilt is currently 23.5 degrees. So this is the primary uh, cause of our seasons. But as we look at in latitude, seasons are only based on certain areas of the Earth, right? Certain areas get more seasons than others. And you might get seasons in terms of the temperature or just the precip, wet and dry seasons. So if we get our equator, which is here, here is our equator, zero degrees. And then we get our, um, our top of Cancer, we get our uh, six degrees, 60 degrees uh, north, and then we get our Arctic Circle. There we go. And the same on the Southern Hemisphere, but I'll just use, I'll use red again. Capricorn, 60 degrees, and Antarctic Circle right there. So there's our main parallels that we look at. And it's going to separate, so I'm going to shade this in. We have our tropics. We have our tropics, we have our mid-latitudes, all right, down here. And we have our polar regions at the extremes. So we have our tropics, our mid-latitudes, and our polars. So the three main zones. Now, these are based on temperature and precip and climate, and also some topography. So you can see why this is influential in a, a foundation to a lot of the geology, geomorphology, volcanology, climatology, meteorology that we work with uh, during the whole uh, year. So this is a very good foundation. Now, because of the sun, Let's put the sun right here. Okay, obviously not to scale um, in terms of scale and distance and size, but let's just do that. Now, now the sun's, okay, the EM spectrum, the radiation that the sun produces and sends out of space, uh, it's called a solar constant. Now, there are fluctuations in that amount of energy with solar flares and other spikes the sun may, may, may give off, but generally we have a, a constant amount of energy pouring into the Earth from the sun, right? And this 
these energies go in straight waves, so or straight lines. So the equator is going to be concentrated all the time because it spins on the axis, right? This way. And it's going to have concentrated sunlight, whereas because of the tilt and the angle of which the uh, different parts of the, the Earth are, are facing the sun or the time or concentration of sunlight on those areas, you're going to have um, increased concentration around the equatorial region and tropics and diminished concentration or decreased concentration around the poles. And the mid-latitudes are kind of like the in-between zone. Um, so you can really look at um, the Earth's Milankovitch cycles and how it fluctuates its uh, position, uh, the sun and the earth, and the how it um, takes in energy from the sun in different ways. So the Milankovitch cycles. So the wobble, the precession, the tilt, and then you can also look at how the how the heat is distributed north and south to even up the heat. So looking at also uh, atmospheric science, meteorology, looking at extreme weather, all that good stuff in terms of... Also, you can look at oceanography as well, so oceans, and the currents, and the movement of heat, and the deep water circulation and surface water circulation and then the wind currents and all everything can be started by looking at latitude and how latitude affects certain areas of the earth for its incoming radiation and how it uses that radiation and how it moves it so wind and currents and and weather patterns another thing you can look at with latitude is certain locations specific places on the earth which have let's say um, a certain latitude which would dictate their environment, their climate, their lifestyle, even their the way of living, their society, and how they how they uh, survived or even uh, flourished in these conditions. Because when you change location, you change the heat, you change or change the latitude, you change the heat, you change the the, the amount of daylight you get, uh, how much nighttime you get, how long the seasons are. Uh, which can dictate a lot of people's um, lifestyles. So if you take two locations, so I usually, uh, with my class, look at um, a town called Barrow, Alaska, so AK, in the USA. Now this has recently been changed back to its native Inuit name, which is U-T-Q-I-A-G-U. Okay, now I won't try and pronounce this uh, native Inuit name, I'll probably butcher it, but I just call it Barrow, uh, even though we have to state the official name. So, Barrow, Alaska, and the uh, latitude is 71.29 degrees north, okay, so it's above the Arctic Circle, as you can see that is at 66 and a half degrees north, so it's above, so let's say I put it right there. So this is Barrow, Alaska, right there. Okay. Another one I use is Aruba, a beautiful tropical island in the Caribbean Sea, just off the coast of South America. And Aruba, so these both are in the Northern Hemisphere. Now Aruba's um, latitude is 12.5 to 11 degrees north so it's in the tropics it's just kind of somewhat halfway between the uh, equator and the tropic of capricorn so cancer sorry cancer in the north so about here so we can see just from this basic diagram the extreme differences in latitude between aruba and Bar alaska so one's in the tropics one's in the polar region so we know that the the temperature and the precip and the weather is going to be obviously different. But because of the latitude and because of the tilt and because of the, the shape of the Earth being an oblate cephaloid and it being a sphere 
and not flat, the effect of the tilt plus the shape of the Earth creates a very cool thing. Now, Aruba's temperature is very, very, very consistent. Now, it's a beautiful island for vacation in, and any time of year you go to Aruba, you're going to get a similar kind of climate. Now, climate is consistent weather over a generally a 30-year period of of data but you're going to get between 80 and you know 90 degrees all year round in terms of fahrenheit okay so it's very consistent with light winds certain directions but there are changes in in precip barrow alaska has a wide uh, range of temperatures going from you know minus 40 degrees fahrenheit up to you know around 20 degrees i was like uh 50 degrees Fahrenheit in some cases. So you've got a very, very large range in temperature. Now, this is due because of the extreme latitude. Because of the tilt, during the summer, Barrow, Alaska is uh, pointing, or this area of the Earth is pointing towards the sun. So Barrow, Alaska has, in the summer, around 80 days, around 80 days of pure sunlight. The sun does not set for 80 days, 80 straight days. So at 3 in the morning in Barrow, Alaska, in the middle of the night, it's bright sunshine. The sun is up. It doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't set. So this is in the summer. Because of the tilt and the way, how high it is, it's basically facing the sun for 80 straight days. And then in the winter, in an opposite thing where the... the uh, the tilt causes the northern hemisphere to point away from the sun. All right, during the winter, Barrow, Alaska is hidden, hidden by the shape of the earth because of the, the straight sunlight. So it has around uh, 67 days of complete darkness of nighttime. The sun doesn't rise for 67 days. So again, this can really affect a person's psychology, uh, physio physiography, so uh, a human can really doesn't do well with these extreme situations. So it's all based on latitude and how high Barrow is in latitude. Whereas Aruba has kind of a consistent season. Temperature, precip, it's consistent seasons. They don't have any winter, really. There's no snow in Aruba, very rarely in extreme cases. There's no snow. But Barrow, Alaska, you've got these extreme seasons and extreme amounts of daylight versus sunlight in, in, in winter and summer. And then obviously spring and fall are very, very, very short seasons. If you compare that to the mid-latitudes right here, and you've got a large, large range, both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, a large range of areas that get the extreme four seasons or three seasons and variations in length of seasons. Um, but I, I use Barrow and, and Aruba as a great example of how latitude can severely affect or change um, a location's environment, climate, and how people live their lives. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching.